Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 63 of my modded Factorio playthrough. On this episode, we are going to use Hellmod and try to plan for all of these ore processing machines that we need to build on the bus. And also, we'll make use of cargo robots, which will be pretty fun. Enjoy. We do know the exact number of flotation cells and ore crushers we're going to need. And hydro plants. And to an extent, the ore powderizers as well because we need 7.5 for sapphirite chunk sorting. So needing 7.5 for the powder sorting kind of makes sense as well. So we have lots of machines we need to make. Flotation cells, ore crushers, hydro plants, ore sorters, and powderizers. But in addition, Something that contributes to the setup is miners, which we're probably going to need a bunch of when we expand, because we're going to need to mine some of these other patches that we're not using right now, like we need crotinium. And the jivalite down there. So we'll need to send all those in. And there's a couple other things we probably can make, like we're not making loaders and fast loaders right now. They're kind of expensive, but they're also kind of hard to craft, so it'd be nice just to automate that process. And also, I'm not making flares anymore, so automating flares would be kind of nice. So we have a bit of a list here of things we need to build. Let's start with the miners. How many do we want? Let's just set it up for one machine. So miner 2 uses miner 1. which uses the burner. So it's one 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 and uses stuff we already have on the bus. So that'll be okay. Let's do some crushers. One machine making crushers. So ore crusher, burner ore crusher. I'll fairly balance. It makes them much slower, 0.2 per second compared to 0.4, but we don't, it's not like we need a bunch of these. It's just, we don't want to have to handcraft them because that'll take like an hour <laughs> just sitting there handcrafting. So it'd be nice just to have the factory handling this while we're doing the setups. So the only bad part about doing it this way is that we need to have some clay bricks brought onto the bus, but we are making the clay bricks already, so it's not that big a deal. We'll just need to put it on the bus somehow. Let's do the flotation cells, which is also pretty straightforward. Uses basic circuit boards. Just want to make sure I can actually build these complicated machines. Looks like it. Yep, everything's in there, so that is something that a assembly machine too can do. So flotation cells are pretty straightforward. What about the powderizers? Okay, those use the clay bricks as well. And one machine can handle that. And then we need to do the ore sorting facilities. One machine. And then ore sorter mark one. More clay bricks. But otherwise the output is all right. Okay, that's mostly good. Let's do a second category here. I need to clear all these categories out in a second, but let's do fast loaders, which require the regular loaders. And the only annoying thing about this is we're going to have to get transport belts and inserters brought in there, unless we can kind of just do it here. It might be a little messy, but we might have to do some weir weird belt business here where we pick up off of that, bring it over here somewhere, and then pick the inserter up from over here and have the belt come around. So it's going to look a little messy. Uh, bots would make that a little cleaner, and I probably would use bots for that if I had them. Though, didn't we have the really simple ones? Yeah, we did unlock the crawler cargo robots it's such a short distance <laughs> uh, even if they're really slow 
It would make it look a lot cleaner if we did it that way. So actually, yes. Let's see if we can do some robots for that. Where they just pick up from here, pick up from here, and then float to wherever we're going to need them. Or, I mean, another thing they can do is just, uh, the robots can, they would fly a much shorter distance if they just picked it up from here and, like, dropped it off here and picked it up from here and dropped it off here and just had a belt going down with them. But I actually don't like the idea of having that many items on a belt, so having the drones fly a longer distance might actually be worth it. We'll have to see how that works. But that's pretty straightforward. And then I think the last thing I mentioned was flares, which is just a little bit of coal. And the coal, we had to bring it all the way down here for these cannon shells, so actually... Well, actually, you can just kind of plop it right here because... We need uh, copper and iron, and it's already right there, so... Let's just do this the easy way. So, any throughput limitations here? Now it appears to be a very slow machine, so... The yellow will be fine. So we'll limit that box there. some coal in. And there we go. That's taken care of. Let's see, since I was just thinking about it, let's try to handle these bots. Since I don't anticipate making a huge network, um, I'll probably just handcraft some of these things. And the disadvantage of using the Angel's bots is that they're large. <laughs> These are 2x2 two two chests rather than 1x1. One one. So we need to have two provider chests here. And that is annoying because they don't fit <laughs> right there. Uh, might just have to have it set off to the side and have the inserters insert into it. So actually you can kind of put it right there. And have an inserter going into it, and let's just say... So what is... The, the robots do a, a full stack. They stack in 50, so... Let's see, the enabled condition. The inserter is less than 50. Okay. Let's do the same thing here. Although, in this case, it looks like we can use the provider chest as the chest to store items. So what's this set at right now? 400. So we'll take that out. Plop that in there. And it's set to 400, and we can drop all those belts in there. And it stopped. So we need somewhere for all the robots to go. Where is the actual construction of these things going to happen? They might have to fly less time if we can just use some of these existing resources here. Probably need all the same stuff. So we need tin and circuits. It's probably more trouble than it's worth to try to hook it up to that. Let's just do it on the end here. I don't want to do it on the bottom, even though there's a little more space there, because I don't want the robots to have to fly across the bus and then have to have, like, um, power poles and logistics extenders and all that. I think it'd be easier just to place it here. So let's get this built. We need two machines. Just build them wherever, and they feed into each other. So we do something like this. With a chest between them. And how fast is this? Fairly slow. So yellow will work. And we'll do circuit network. Loader is less than 
50? 50 is a loader is going to be quite a lot. How much does one loader have in it as far as resources are concerned? Wow, quite a bit. Eh, that's okay. I'll let the factory grind them out. We'll use them eventually. Let's make this more symmetrical. Put them on the side. Okay, what kind of resources? Well, on one side, we're going to need a requester chest. Let's say right there, and then we can do our logistics request, transport belts. Let's say two stacks worth. Just so there's a little bit of buffer in there. And two stacks of inserters. And we need to insert those. A yellow will be fine. Tin and circuit boards. Let's do circuit boards along there and the tin right there. The yellow will be fine. So we can do the tin and the circuit board. And then the circuit board will also get consumed up there. But we also need to bring in steel gears and bronze plates. I just updated the mod here. Um, it's probably, I don't know if that was either Angels or the Artisanal Reskin, but bronze changed color a little bit. It is darker now, but it's still the same resource as before. It's just a slightly different color. So we need to get those in. And we can bring them up through there. Looks like a red will just barely work. And that should be everything. So let's get it moved into place. Try to get it lined up with the other stuff. And we also need to get this robot port in here. How do we want the robots to travel? Probably just along the top. The one annoying thing about these robots is that their zones are very small. I don't know exactly, it's been a long time since I've used them, so I don't know uh, how long they can go without a charge. So let's have a charging station like every other expander. Okay, that's charging up. We need to extend the logistic zone. Like right there. And then this, which we just get to drag and drop. As you can see, they are very short range. That seems awfully close though. Probably can go a whole lot farther than just this distance without running out of power. Let's make it every fourth one. Oh yeah, and the advantage is the, these ones don't require electricity. Hmm. Actually, it might work better to just go in through the bottom. It'll just look cleaner. If that's the case, placing this up here is kind of inefficient. It would be better to place it down here. Because if we put power poles on the bottom of all of these, that should allow us to expand it. Well, these aren't connected by power poles, so I guess it doesn't matter. We only need to put power poles down there for the charging stations. There we go, that's connected. Four. Then this last one, which can be a charger. And there we go. How many robots do we want to add to this network? Probably don't really need very many of them. Let's just add 10 in there for now. I don't want to have to build a bunch of them. Oops, we need some lights here. There we go. So when we drop the robots in here, the magic should happen. And there they go. Very, very slowly. <laughs> oh yeah, they hold tons of power. They could probably make that whole round trip without recharging. Well, it's nice to have the recharging stations along the way, just in case. 
Nothing worse than having a robot out of power and has to travel halfway across the factory looking for a charging port somewhere. Let's see. I think we want to extend this to two stacks. Because that's what we had our logic set up for. And that one should already be set up properly. Because it's set to 400, so that's enough. Robots are so slow. Whoop, they're diverging. Well, they'll get back eventually. Okay, we need to hook up the resources. There we go. Got some parts in there. How are they doing on charge? Yep, they can make the whole trip without recharging. That's pretty efficient, actually. Okay, let's get everything hooked up and see how it works. Oh, we don't have an output for uh, this right here. Thank you, bots. You made life a little easier. The main advantage to this is just not having a long belt full of items that are just stuck on a belt. Like, having copper plates and whatever on a belt isn't that big of a deal because they're unfinished products and they're not very dense. But imagine a long belt going all the way down there and all it's filled with is inserters. Like, how many hundreds of inserters and uh, yellow belts is that going to be? And how many resources is that going to be? And what happens if we ever have to, like, move the bus and pick all those up and it's just a bunch of extra stuff in our inventory? Where we already have a bunch of <laughs> stuff on the bus. I'm going to try to keep it as uh, compacted as possible. Okay. could probably go through here and start cleaning out some of this stuff. So you'll probably leave the wood. The pellets are pretty simple. I'll leave the carbon, sulfur, green algae. Okay, that's a little simpler. So to make all of these machines requires the same stuff we already have on the bus, the exception of clay bricks. Looks like they all use a very similar sequence of resources here where they use steel, steel gears, stone bricks, circuit boards. It's possible we might be able to make this work a little simpler and not have to keep pulling off the bus, but we'll have to see how that works. But to begin with, we need some clay bricks. And that's the end of this episode. On the next one, we are going to use transport drones to get the clay bricks on the bus. And then we're going to finally build all of these machines that we're going to need to expand our ore processing setup. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.